you can hear me now yeah i can hear you um uh, i i see me clearly yes i can Is the see picture you. clear yes it's clear ah uh, okay uh okay uh thank you for joining me tonight uh many people have been waiting for this moment to to hear you speak and uh to hear about you uh nelson how have you been i've been okay how have you been i've been good how is america uh, how uh it's uh, treating us uh, okay yes hopefully morocco is treating you the same not bad yeah Okay uh there are so many questions that people would uh, really want to know especially uh, when you left yes. and uh, most people haven't uh, have had a chance to interact with you but the first question I'll put to you Nelson is um, where did you get the interest to play soccer in the first place um the interest to play soccer uh, I think I got the interest from my dad um from a young age he used to take us for um football clinics and um KKL and I think I got the interest to play football from there. Ah, uh, okay. Um Yes. So, so from that point to now, how long have you played the game? Um I would say maybe 14 years. I played the game for maybe 14 years now. 14-15 uh, okay. years. Okay, for the fifteen years. Um, yes. Which is your preferred position? Because I, I have seen sev- at several clubs where you've been playing. Sometimes you you played wide uh, on the left, wide on the right, through the center. Which is your favored playing position? Um, my favorite my favorite playing position is the number nine. Um, preferably, I would I would prefer to play with another striker, so it gives me the freedom to run to the left, to run to the right, and um, yeah. If 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 I'm the I'm the only striker there, then I have um to stay more as a target man, and I'm limited to use my um speed and ability off the wings. But if we're two strikers, then I can easily link up play and um move to the left and the right. Okay. uh there there has been this notion especially in Ugandan football that um you either choose football yes you choose education and you cannot choose both of them like uh, those who play football most times uh, don't get the education and those who choose education uh, stop playing football how did you manage to get these two going for you um it's it's not easy to balance um education and football and especially in Uganda many of our parents they want you to study and by the time you're done studying maybe it's too late to um to get the basics of football and that but um i think it all depends on on how how much passion you have for the game many i think not only you but many um players will tell you that they used to escape from school to play football tournaments and to play football with their friends and um i think even up to now when you um reach the level maybe of professional football you can see that um it's maybe it's kind of what can i say um a disadvantage because um we have um we you have you play with players who've played in an academy since maybe six or seven years and at six or seven years you were studying you were only started playing serious football maybe when you're 15 uh 16 17 after leaving high school so there's many basics that they have that they and many things they do naturally that they've done from a young age that you maybe had to teach yourself or you learned at a later stage and maybe that's one of the reasons why it takes us a bit longer to adapt to professional football and that okay um uh, now so take us through your ordinary day at uh, at at your football club in uh, morocco what would uh, nelson's day be from morning until the sun comes down um during quarantine or not during quarantine uh, not during quarantine because during i mean quarantine. on on an ordinary day on a, a normal ordinary day yes Um, on a normal day, I probably wake up at about eight o'clock. It depends on what time the training is. Sometimes the training is at ten o'clock. Sometimes the training is at eleven o'clock. But I'd wake up maybe at eight o'clock, um, have my breakfast, take a shower, and then I'd go for the training session. If the training is at ten o'clock, maybe it's one and a half hours. Um, by maybe eleven thirty, midday, you're done. Sometimes you stay behind to do some extra work, some shooting practice, um, some fitness work, or. something like that and then i come back home um i have my lunch at about one o'clock and then i take a nap maybe for two hours 
Then at about um, four o'clock, five o'clock, sometimes I usually go to the gym. If I don't go to the gym, maybe I go for a jog. Um, it depends on the day. Some days I go to the gym, some days I go to, uh, for, for a jog. And then other days maybe I go and play five a side with a couple of teammates. Um, there's a, a, a artificial turf that we usually go to, to play together and we play small tournaments in the evening for about one and a half hours. And then I come back home take a shower, have my dinner, and then maybe watch, um, if there's a game on TV, I'd watch a game. If uh, Sometimes I watch movies on, on Netflix, and then I, have, I sleep later on. Uh, okay. Uh, um, what has been the difference that you have um, uh, seen? Because you, you played in Uganda, uh, you, you played in the UK, and uh, now you're playing in Morocco. What has been the difference, especially from Uganda to Morocco, in terms of uh, uh, the training uh, regimen? Um, in terms of the training, um, the training here is more um, specific. If we're, if we're practicing, maybe finishing, we're doing only finishing. If we're practicing, um, let's say, possession, uh, we might do an entire possession, an entire training session, and only possession. In Uganda, mainly the training is um, here you don't get many times when you play 11 aside in training sessions. In Uganda, almost every week you might play 11 aside, maybe twice a week. But here, very rarely do you play 11 aside on a full pitch. Um, maybe before the game, you might do it for 20 minutes a half, uh, once or twice, but very rarely. Here, most of the time, the training is, is specific. It's based on mainly what on, on, on a specific opposition, depending on how the other team plays, that's exactly how you train. If today we're going to use maybe balls behind the defenders, or we're going to play possession, or we're going to play counter-attack, the entire training session during the week is designed accordingly. So every week you have different training sessions, and I think that helps you improve as a player and play in different kind of situations. But in Uganda, mainly the training is maybe fitness-based. You do a lot of running. Here, you, there's very little running. You might, if you don't do extra training by yourself, especially coming from Uganda, it's very easy to be unfit. Okay. Uh, uh, then, uh, what has what who what has influenced you? Who has influenced you most in uh, your game? Because uh, most footballers uh, hone their game onto uh, certain individuals or uh, players they have seen. Who? Which individual is that or player that uh, has influenced your kind of game? Um, I think the individual who influenced my game the most is the Brazilian Ronaldo. I used to watch a lot of his videos when I was young. I think I've watched all the videos on YouTube, actually. I tried to look for some new videos um, to watch him, to see new things that he used to do, but I've watched very many of his videos. I think he had the speed, he had the power, he had the strength, he had the dribbling, he had the finishing ability. So I tried to mold my game around his. Um, also when Fernando Torres came to Liverpool, being a Liverpool fan, I watched a lot of Fernando Torres. And um, I tried to copy a few things. Every time I watch a game, I, I, I try to analyze the striker and see what the striker is doing, Suarez, um, Aguero, and try to copy a few things from, um, from their game to add them to my game. But I think the biggest influence has been the Brazilian Ronaldo. Okay. Um... Then, uh, actually, this is the question that most people are asking, especially in my inbox. Yes. What does Nelson do when he's not playing football? Uh, what does Nelson do when he's not playing football? I'm not really... yeah, when you're not playing football, like <laughs> when you're, like your free time or what? Who, what are you doing in uh, in Morocco? When uh, in Morocco, most of the time I'm actually home. <laughs> uh, there's uh -huh. not there's not much to do here because. Um, being my first year here, there's a few things you can do, but once you've done them, then you can't do much more. Sometimes, when I came, I wanted to go quad biking with my with my friends. Uh, we haven't yet done that, but we'll do it soon. Um, it, I, I like to swim, but swimming is part of maybe the gym routine. Uh, so there's not much you do. Usually, maybe you can walk around, you go see new places, but there's not much you do, especially in, in the city here. So most of the time I'm at home okay. watching TV or watching movies. Uh, then uh, w you watch a lot of football. I'm sure uh, this is another question people want to know. Which is your favorite 
team? My favorite team is Liverpool. Liverpool and Real Madrid. Oh. Yes. Uh, okay. So you, you are gearing up to, to lift the trophy, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> I'll be lifting the okay. trophy for me. Then... <laughs> okay. Uh, with the... With the so many amazing goals that you have scored, especially in the Ugandan league and maybe for the national team, yes. which one stands out most as that moment, that goal that you really look back at to and uh, as a forward and say, yeah, that was it? Um, I think the goal against Express is a goal I scored in the Ugandan Premier League against Express. Unfortunately, it wasn't caught on camera. Um, I dribbled about three or four players from the center. At that time, the game was 1-1. One, one. Um, the stadium at Moira, I think that's the biggest crowd we've ever had. A lot of many Express fans came. Uh, they were giving us a lot of stick. Um, as you know, Express fans are a bit rowdy and they shout and all this. So I went past three or four players from the center and chipped the ball over the goalkeeper. I think that goal um, and the situation, how the match was going, and our situation as well at that time we're fighting to avoid relegation so all together um, made that goal very special for me and maybe as well the goal against Sawana last season where I caught the ball and that was a good goal as well okay so after you've scored so many goals and uh, of course you have uh, seen so many victories but uh, what is your proudest moment in football what stands out as your proudest moment in football um, my proudest moment in football, I think, was scoring here, my first goal for Tetuan. I think um, when you've done it in Uganda and you've done it maybe, because I've scored many goals in Uganda, I've scored one goal for the national team, but when you go to a foreign country and you get your first goal, it, it's actually a, a big boost to show that actually you can do it, you can score in another place other than Uganda, in another place where you're not comfortable, where you're new. It was it was a boost to show that I can actually do it in um in a foreign country and in a foreign place. Uh, okay. Now, um, for most footballers uh, have uh, special routines or things that they do before the game. Uh, others are say superstition. What does Nelson do uh, before a football match? I mean, that uh, either prepares you or psychs you up. What is that thing that you do? Um, I don't really have any superstitions or any any anything in particular that I do. Um, but when I was at Hope FC, um, I used to, um, they used to give me Fanta Berry before every game. Ian, Ian and Bruce mm -hmm. would bring me Fanta Berry before every game. And I don't know, I wouldn't say that it's, it's something that maybe score, but maybe it, um, it made me a bit happy or something. So every time I drank the Fanta Berry, I would score two or three goals, but I don't really have any, any superstitions that I usually do before the game. And obviously now, um, uh, drinking soda is, is not as good for football players, so oh, okay. I don't take the Fanta Berry anymore as, as much as I would love to. Okay. Uh, dealing now that you are away from home, uh, how do you deal with the the fact that you're very far from home, especially in a foreign land, yes. um, you're probably alone, you you don't have family around you. How how are you dealing with that? How are you coping with it, especially now that you're even, in, I think, in a lock, lock up, lockdown or something like that? Yes. How is the situation? Um, actually, for me, it's, it's not difficult because of being away from home before. Um, I think being in boarding school prepares you as well. Um, you don't miss your family members as much um, when you're in boarding school and you don't see them as much. And also when I was in the UK, um, uh, it helped me to prepare for such a situation where I don't see my family every every week or every month. So I don't get as uh, um, as much homesick as, I, as, as other players or as I don't miss home as much. And also maybe I focus more on I need to be here. I need to do what I've come to do. And but obviously with technology, you talk to them almost every other day. You can video call, you can chat. So it's not as difficult to be away from home now. OK, uh, the advice you played with so many uh, young footballers and especially in Uganda who would want to be in a position that you are right now uh, to play uh, professional football in a foreign land. What advice do you give to these young and budding footballers, especially the, the very many in Uganda? Um, the advice to the young footballers, I think, is Hard work. Hard work um, comes over everything. There's many things that um, the coaches here look look at, but if you're hardworking, you can 
impress any coach. Obviously, there's discipline. There's um, you have to be very disciplined. Where by discipline, I mean things like partying, alcohol, drugs, which many young players do. All those, all those are um, they stop you from reaching as far as you can. After you make it, and you have money, and you can do all those things because football ends at a young at a young age. But I think basically hard work and if you work as hard as you should um you have you, you give yourself the best chance and you don't have any regrets to say maybe i should have done this maybe i should have worked harder but if you if you do as much as you can then you can honestly say i did my best and it, it just wasn't for me yeah um you, you you're playing right now um you are in morocco what what is the next step for Nelson uh, after this? What are you uh, looking at? Because uh, people uh, back home are looking at you to get to where to Morocco where you are. For you as Nelson, what uh, what's in the pipeline? Um, I, my, I mean, it might be too early to ask the question, but uh, um, obviously for Morocco, um, Morocco is a is a good league where many players are signed to Europe, to Spain, to Belgium, um, to France. So hopefully, if I can do as well. If I can have a good season uh, this season and maybe the next season, there are many people who are always watching. Um, the Moroccan League is on Bean Sports, which is watched worldwide. And it's a good opportunity to be scouted, to be seen. And um, hopefully I can get to move to Europe from here. Okay. Um, you, you, you talked about, uh, about the, the careers of uh, footballers, of course, being uh, short. It's not a career that you can take on for the rest of your life. What does Nelson uh, envisage after after the run in with football? What are you, what are your future prospects? Um, after football, I think um, I'd like to obviously if I if I'm able to make enough money, I'd like to invest my money wisely. Um, own some businesses, hopefully own a football team in Uganda. I'd like to own a football team in Uganda and maybe an academy to help the young players come through as well. And if I'm able to get as many connections as I hope to get, it will make a pathway for them to come from Uganda to bigger clubs in Africa and to Europe. And yeah, I also like motorsport. I like um, motor rallying. I might get myself into motor rallying if if I am able to um, finish my career and I might be a rally driver in Uganda. Okay. Uh... Uh, the question that I usually I ask my guests uh, uh, that come on the show, I, yes. I ask you, I'll ask you the same question. And uh, Nelson, uh, who is the, like, who do you think is the, the greatest Ugandan footballer of all time? The ones that you've seen? I mean, in your uh, opinion, who do you think the, it is? The greatest footballer. Obviously, people, people talk about Omondi and people talk about all these players, but I never got a chance to see any of them. And I think the the, the, the the ones I've seen, I would say maybe David Obo and Geoffrey Massa, because those are those are the those are the two that I watched when I was young. I saw them at Nambole and I remember one time I saw Obo score a goal at Nambole and, and Massa as well. And it gave me goosebumps and it, it made me want to play for the national team. It made me want to be in the moment and score like them and that time the the, the stadium was full. Not today the stadium doesn't get as full as, as it was those days, but it was a great moment and it made me want to be like them when I grow up, Massa and David Abo. Okay. Uh, then, the, uh, well, this is usually the final question that I, I always put up to uh, my guests, and, and I'm saying, okay, Nelson, your footballer, uh, give us the your best 11, you inclusive, of the footballers that you've played with, maybe the ones that you've watched in the Ugandan League. So, uh, we will go number one up to... Uh, the last person, but of course you inclusive. Um, that's a, a tough question to ask on the spot. I would have, I would have wanted to have a chance to think about that. <laughs> no, uh, that, that, that is, that is the fun of it. It's only that's Ugandan players. If you, if, you, if, you, if you, I mean, you might choose because you you played in Morocco, you played in England. I mean, uh. you played here. So, you give us the eleven. I mean, it's on the spot. If you leave out uh, some people. Uh, they're watching you, so they will be asking you, did you see me? <laughs> um, my best 11 um, that I've played with, let me see. In goal, um, it'd probably be Onyango. Um, I played with Onyango in a World Cup um, friendly match in Ethiopia. 
it was a pre World Cup match, but it was a friendly match against Ethiopia. Uh, Munyango is obviously the best goalkeeper in Africa, so that's um, I think there's no doubt about that. Um, but I've played with a few goalkeepers. I've played with Ochan, I've played with Watenga. Um, they're good goalkeepers. Mugabe has seen as well at KCC. Um, at right back. Um, so, yes. So we are going with the Nyango and goal, right? Yes, we go with the Nyango and goal. At right back. Are you writing this down or you're not writing this down? I don't want to be, I don't want people no, to, to I, be I in my to... inbox afterwards and say, <laughs> oh, this guy didn't pick us up. <laughs> No, it's the fun of it. It's uh, Onyango. Onyango yes. is number one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Onyango is number one. Um, number two. Number two. Um, let me see. Number two. Um, I would put. I think. Um, I've played with Wadada. I've played with. Um. Who's their number two at KCC at the time? Sakampim, I think. I think number number two, I'll probably put um Wadada. I'll put Wadada in number two. Wadada. Okay. Yes. And that left back? Uh, left back. Um, Ocha, I think I'll put Ocha at left back. What formation are we using? Ocha. You tell me, you, you, you're the owner of the team. It's not my team. <laughs> you, you're putting them on the field. Okay, I'll, I'll okay. use. I, uh, let me let me problem. change. Let me change to three five two. Let me change to three five two. You're changing to three five two. So yes, you're playing with three, the three, the three, three, the three, three behind. Backs. So, uh, yes. so who, who are the, who are the three uh, at the back? The three at the back. Um, Juko Morshid. Juko. Yes. Uh, Savio, mm -hmm. Savio Kabogo. Savio. Yes. Um, and the last one, uh, maybe, um, let me see. I would put there's a, there's a center back here who we play, we have in Morocco here. He's won the Moroccan league. He's won. He's played for the national team. I think I'd put him in between Savio and, and um. So what's Jiko. his name? It's called Hamza Haji. Hamza. Yes. Uh, so now those are the three. Onyango in goal. Yes. So now you want to spread out the five in the middle? Yes, the five in the middle. I think um. I would have one defensive. Two attacking and, and uh, one on the left and one on the right. And and who and who would that be? The defensive midfielder. Yes. Um. The defensive midfielder. Uh, let me put the attacking midfielders first. Okay. Um, the attacking midfielders I would have um, on the right I would put. Let me see who's going to play on my right side. On the left side, I would put yes. um. On the left side, I would put Mia. Mia. Yes, coming off the left. And um. And you said coming. Who is coming off the right? Off the right, I've not yet named them. Okay. Yes, my three, my me, my three man midfield. I would put um. Mutiaba. Mutiaba. Yes. Zamir. Yes, Muzamir. Mm. I would put mm. Gift Ali. Gift. Yes. And um, let me see who else. Uh, you put me on the spot. Yeah, I mean, this is how coaches, I'm a coach, that is how players expect us to name the lineup. I mean, I have uh, uh, all of you guys and everybody's expecting to play, so you're on the spot, Nelson. You have a whole week to think about it and the whole night to, to name the lineup. Um, mm. Number 10. I'd, I'd obviously be the, the main striker. You can put me on the list. You, you, 
okay, Nelson, you'll be leading the, the pack, right? Yes. Mm. Um, the number 10, the number 10 behind me, I would put, um, I'd put Mahad Chiseka from Bright Stars. Ooh. Mahad Chiseka. M Mahad Chiseka. Yes. Mm. The number 10. Mm. So I have a number 7 and number 8 left. Yeah, yes, you need you need the uh, you, you, you need the uh, yes you need those ones. Um, I'd put um Alvin Serokenya on the right wing from Hope FC. Serokenya. Yes, Alvin. Mm. I think I need a defensive midfielder. I might go with there's Ivan Tege, there's um Kachanga, there's. Um, might go with a, a creative midfield with no defensive player, maybe. Mm. Yeah, th that's uh, that is the the famous uh, Real Madrid where they said that it was a Mercedes Benz using old tires. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you leave out that tire, uh, which uh. is the defensive midfield, and and you want the slick stuff only. So anyway, uh, so the who, who did with? I say number seven? You have Seru Kenya uh, okay. uh, coming coming off the right. Uh -huh. Then you have uh, Mahad right behind you and yes. Mia coming the off the left. Uh, mm. I'll put Mia in. in uh, let me put Mia uh, in the midfield and put Ochai on the left. Okay, so Mia goes in the midfield and yes. Ochai on the left. Then Mia. So that is it. Yes. So uh, yeah, that is it. That uh, that 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 uh, is your eleven. That uh, Onyango, Ojuko, Savio, Hamza, Mutiaba, yes. Gift oh. Ali, Mia, Ser Kenya, Mahad, Kochea, and yours truly, yourself. Yes. So uh, that team would be winning, eh? Uh, Winning how many goals? Um, probably three, four nil every week. <laughs> three, four nil. Okay, and uh, Nelson, it was uh, really nice uh, talking to you and um, uh, getting to to see that you're okay, you're fine. Now, what? Uh, lastly, like you're living, what would, what message do you give out to the, your fans, especially out there in Uganda and the ones who are watching you all over the world? Um, I'd like to thank them for, for their support. Um, it's very encouraging, especially in moments where maybe you're not doing as well as you think you should. Sometimes a simple message or a simple comment um, can re-energize you and can give you more motivation to keep working hard. And yeah, I'll keep doing my best um, to try and live up to the expectations and to also um, try to, full, to fulfill my dreams. And um, yeah, I appreciate the support and take care and God bless. Okay. Uh, thank yes. you, Nelson. Uh, have a nice evening. Uh, enjoy your football still going on. And yes. uh, God bless you too. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Yes.